to the Legislative Assembly of the Northwest Territories. My name is Danielle Mauger and I'm the Manager of Public Affairs and Communications. I've been with the Legislature since 2007 and just celebrated my 10th year. I was born and raised in the Northwest Territories, born in Inuvik NWT and was raised in Cambridge Bay which is now part of Nunavut. Let me tell you a little bit about the mace. At the top of the mace we have a 1.31 carat diamond. That diamond was mined at the Akadi Diamond Mine and was one of the very first diamonds to come out of the mine and was the very first producing diamond mine in Canada. The design that the diamond is sitting on top of is two silver cross pieces. One of the cross pieces is of an ulu and that's to show respect to all the Inuit people who live within the Northwest Territories. It's also in the shape of the teepee and again that's to show respect to all the Dene and the Métis people who reside within the territory. In the middle of the cross piece is a cutout of a house and again, that's to show respect to all the non-Aboriginal people who make their home within the Northwest Territories. So the artist really wanted to incorporate all of the main cultures in the NWT. In the middle of the crown is a golden orb, and that orb symbolizes eternal life, the midnight sun, and the earth. At the top of the crown, we have six snowflakes. And again, they're to show and remind people, as everyone knows, no two snowflakes are exactly alike that's very similar to the cultures and the people within the territory. We have many similarities, but we're not exactly the same. At the base of the crown is a language band, and within that band it says one land, many voices, but it's written in the official languages of the Northwest Territories. The head of the mace is made of glacier spun marble paneling, and this marble was found here on the east arm of the Great Slave Lake. Each panel shows different vertical and horizontal imagery of the Northwest Territories, different wildlife, different things that you see around the territory. Underneath the head of the mace, you see some beautiful beadwork. And this beadwork is there to signify the Inuvialut and the Gwich'in people in a design called the Delta Braid. Here we have the bronze cast of the narwhal tusk. And down at the bottom, the white, pink, and purple is porcupine quill work, which is a Dene and Métis art form. At the bottom of the mace, we have a six-sided silver foot, and if you were to lay this foot out completely flat, it would be one continuous northern scenery, with the water being at the bottom. For the middle, the land that starts off at the tundra comes around to the mountains and then back to the tundra, and then in the sky where they've etched in our northern lights. The stand of the mace is made of white marble, and the etching that you see on the stand is an etching of the Mackenzie River. So here we have the Great Slave Lake, it comes all the way up to the Great Bear Lake and then all the way up to the Arctic Ocean. The rock that you see on the stand is taken from the Precambrian Shield, one of the oldest known rocks in the world, known to be about four billion years old, and much of which is situated in the Northwest Territories. The replica of the flower is seen here on the mace. Our official flower in the Northwest Territories is called the Mountain Avon. Within this circle, there are 33 small gold nuggets, and each nugget represents a community within the Northwest Territories. Now what makes this mace truly unique and unlike any other mace in the world is its sound. What the artists did was they had a respected elder from every community collect a handful of pebbles and they placed the pebbles inside the mace. So there are some in the language band, some in the head of the mace, and some in the foot. So when the sergeant at arms hoists the mace up onto his shoulder, it makes a loud kind of rain stick or almost like a rattle-like sound. And it goes back to our language band of one land, many voices.